Hello everyone, welcome to the Zentangle Project Pack series. My name is Molly. I am going to be um, going through a couple of details before we get started here and then we'll be on our way. This lesson is part of our first Apprentice Project Pack series. Um, we're super excited about it because Zentangle Apprentice is part of the Zentangle family that focuses on designing products and lessons catered to our younger audience. We believe that we all have a child inside us, which makes all of these videos great for tanglers of all ages. So we, we are happy to have all of you here, no matter what your age is. So we're gonna be working with the materials found in our Apprentice Project Pack envelopes right here. Um, these project packs are available from some of our certified Zentangle teachers and from Zentangle.com. If you do not have a project pack, um, we really encourage you to follow along anyway and just find whatever materials you have at home that are maybe comparable to the ones we're using. So please, please, please join us either way. Let's get started. So I have an amazing crew of artists here with me today um, that are going to help me with this class. So I have Alex. Massey, Gwen, Indy, and myself, and I said my name is Molly, and I'm super excited to have this crew here because um, they're um, a group of kids that I um, am lucky enough to have um, with us pretty often because their moms all work at Zentangle, so we are, um, we, we live Zentangle quite a lot <laughs> with this crew here, um, and it's fun that they're able to join along with this, um, this video series, so thank you for joining us. And today we're gonna to be starting off um, just teaching you guys a little bit about the Zentangle string, all right? So before you guys um, follow along, I wanna just show you a couple of things. So in our first couple of videos, um, we did something like this where we would put um, four dots in the corner of our tile. And again, just follow along with me for a minute here, um, just watching, and then we will um, all start drawing in a minute. And then, with our pencils, we'll create a beautiful border. And then in the beginning, I think we created a string that was a little bit like a Z and we divided up our tile. But strings can be really be anything. They could be something quite simple that just divide your tile into maybe some sections like so. Or maybe strings could be something that divide your tile into sections that look maybe something like that, a little more geometric. So really, a string is just a way to get some pencil lines down on your tile and get you ready for tangling. So, really different, right? All different sides of strings. So as you can see, just in the last minute, I created three different strings and had these tiles that could be ready for tangling. So today I'm gonna to invite all of you to do the same. So I have my partners here and they're gonna get their tiles going. And I have some of them working on white tiles and some of them are working on black tiles. So I now invite you to pick either a white tile or a black tile. And for your string, um, if, even if you're working on a black tile, you can actually use um, a graphite pencil if you want. You can use a white pencil if you want, but a, the graphite pencil is kind of cool on a black tile because then it, um, it sort of disappears. So before we get started, and I actually forgot a step here, so I'm going to have you guys put your pencils down for one second and take a deep breath because the first step in the Zentangle method, and we often like forget this part because we just got caught up in talking about strings and then we got caught up in getting our supplies ready, but we forgot that the first step in the Zentangle method is actually gratitude and appreciation. So a lot of times we just try to pause for a minute before we start drawing and give us ourselves a moment to maybe think about something you're grateful for. Maybe just think about having a moment with some friends, having a moment by yourself, having a moment to create. Whatever it is for you, give yourself that time for gratitude. And it doesn't have to be long. It just gives you sort of some perspective for the time you have ahead. So 
Once we have that first step done, I now invite you to pick up your pencils and put our four dots in the corners of our tile. And then ever so lightly, connect those dots to create a border. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Notice I like to turn my tile as I go. Nice work, ladies. And then we're going to create what we call a string. And so I'm gonna just grab those other tiles I showed you earlier as examples before we go ahead and do our own string. And you can see that um, the string was done pretty fast. I wasn't really worried about staying inside the lines that much. But what you wanna think about is you wanna create a bunch of spaces, but you don't wanna to have too many spaces because they'll get too tiny and you won't have a lot of room. So you wanna just break it up into, you know, between four and eight spaces, but not, you don't have to think about it too much. And I like kind of rounder spaces, so I'm gonna do something like this, but you might like really sharp, edgy, and they can be very simple. And you can pick up your pen in between, your pencil in between. It doesn't really have to be specific. If you get done with one stroke and you're like, I wanna add one more line, Perfect. These are great, you guys. So I'm going to invite my friends here to show me what they came up with so that we can um, give you some ideas of what we're starting with here. Here we have Indies. Oh, Gwen's. Very cool. As you can see, these are pretty simple. Beautiful. Love these. Very cool. Okay. So, Alex, which one was yours? This one was yours? Yes, okay. Mazzy? Okay. Indy and Gwen. Okay. Next time we should, we should switch tiles and have everybody create on their other strings. That would be crazy. But let's work on our own tiles for now. Okay, so we're ready to get started here. And I know that you have a beautiful string in front of you. My friends here all have their um, unique strings in front of them. And we're all going to start with the same tangle. And I am going to be working with a, a black pen, um, but the girls here have decided that they're going to be working um, with the colored pens. They're pretty jazzed about all these new gel pens in the pack, and so they're going to be working um, with different colors, and you'll see um, their work as that progresses along, and then you'll see mine with the black to see how um, you can do it really in, in different ways. So I'm going to start off with showing you guys a tangle here called Poke Root. It's a favorite one um, amongst the crew here, and it's always been one of my favorites, and I love how it can kind of grow over and sort of take advantage of the space, and it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of a fun one. So here we go. This is how Poke Root starts. So Poke Root begins with a sort of like a little stem, and then we're going to cap off the stem with sort of this little like curved line, I like to say it a sort of like a, a parentheses or I don't know, something like that. And then we're gonna create sort of a berry shape that goes all the way around. So that's our basic poke root. And we just kind of continue drawing that same shape, a little stem, cap it off with a little curved line, and then almost like you're creating a, a barrier, a circle that goes all the way around like so. And we're sort of growing them off of one another. They might sort of clump up and one falls behind another. You can draw some sort of falling behind below. And as you can see, I'm drawing in this space right here, but I'm, I'm sort of ignoring the string lines a little bit. I'm using it as a guide. Um, and this is the space I'm gonna try to occupy for the most part, but I'm not super worried about if I go over those pencil lines because they really do disappear and they become part of your composition. So that's really what strings are for. They're for giving you a suggestion, creating sort of the inspiration behind how your composition is going to go, but it doesn't mean that you can't later on decide to change it. How you girls doing over there? 
Good. 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 Oh, these are beautiful. They're all so different. I love it. So there is actually a variation of um, poke root we call, Indy, what do we call that variation? Double poke root? Double poke root's one of them. And what's the other poke one? Poke leaf? Poke leaf, right, yeah. So we draw that one a, a lot. So poke leaf, I'm going to put one up here to show you guys what it looks like. It's the same thing where you draw a stem, cap it off, but instead of a circle, we put kind of a, to me it looks like, a, like almost like an upside down heart shape. And then you have sort of these more leafy looking things. And you can do all poke leaves together, or you can kind of combine them with your poke roots. Yeah, totally, yep. I like to go right over the edges with my poke root and poke leaf because it it makes it look like these overgrown plants are kind of taking over. And if you draw your poke root as your first tangle, it really rises to the top because you can go right over those string lines and then the other tangles can kind of fall behind. For me, it's just knowing when to stop because I sometimes just want to keep going. So one other thing I like to do with my poke root, once I get as many of these shapes as I want on here, I sometimes will go back in and this is just an option, but you can try it. I like to go back in and sort of color in those little spaces that are in between all my shapes. And again, this is just an, uh, an option, but to me it kind of creates um, this very cool contrast. If you're working with your gel pens, you might choose to do that in an opposite color. If it's like the same color, it looks cool, like filling it in. I know, right? Yeah, it creates a really neat like, backdrop. It looks like something put together. And what's cool about the gel pens is you can layer them. So in a minute, I'm going to show you what the girls have come up with and I'll explain. You might be able to um, put down a layer of blue and then you can later go back in with a dot of another color. And you might not get every single spot. It's up to you. Sometimes if you just ink in a few, it creates even enough contrast to have something cool going on. All right, so I think I'm just about done filling in my spaces. How are you girls doing? Almost done. Almost done too. So here we have Gwen's. Oh my goodness, so much fun. I love the character of hers. They have like almost this more like a mushroom growing around here and the yellow is like a great, super fun, almost like animated, right? Very cool. And Alex, how are you doing? Good. So Alex worked on a, a white tile here. Oh, and hers are, oh, they're like, almost look like real berries. They've got cool character here and there. I look at, she's got them curving around the edges here. Super, super cool. Mazzy? Oh, so Mazzy picked two colors that are almost like right close to each other and they create this um, very cool effect, which is interesting. Again, slightly going over the string line. So cool. And Indy, last but not least. So Indy chose to just use all the same color and it kind of has this like the popping right off of the background. So look at these, beautiful. We are moving right along. So we're gonna move on to doing another tangle. And I have a couple tangles planned out for today, but if you end up doing two tangles today, that's fine. If you end up adding three to your um, tile, that's fine. And if you do all four, that's totally fine too. So let's just roll with it. Like don't overthink how much room you need or what you're, how you're mapping out your tile. I would rather have you just kind of go with it and see how everything kind of comes together. And what's great about these videos is you can always do them again um, a different way. So. For my next tangle, I want a lot of room because I like this tangle a lot and I wanna um, give myself enough room to kind of make it a feature. And this tangle, I want, I'm gonna put two spaces together. So I'm gonna kind of ignore this line right here so that I can 
have more space. And that's what's great about string lines is you can kind of ignore them. But if you want to choose um, to do it all in one space, that's fine too. And you can also just choose to watch for a minute to see what's happening if, you, um, if you'd rather do that. So I invite you to do whatever works for you. This tangle is a grid tangle. It's called Enzeppel. Enzeppel is one of my favorites because I feel like it kind of uh, is a surprise at the end, for me anyway. So I'm going to create what we call a grid, and I'm going to do that by creating um, a bunch of parallel lines going in one direction first. And I invite you to make sure you have enough space. You don't want to put them too close together because we're going to be drawing within our spaces. So uh, make sure they're, they're pretty wide. And then once I have them all going in one direction, I'm going to turn my tile and draw some going in the other direction. Okay. So I have a grid here and I wanna break up these squares I have in half to create some triangles. So I'm just gonna do one in the middle to show you what I'm talking about. So I'm basically just gonna go in one direction, creating a line. So I'm gonna go into every single square and do the same thing. If you wanted to alternate the direction of those lines, you could do that. But for now, I'm just gonna do them all going in the same direction. And I'm, I do like to just go focusing on one square at a time instead of drawing one long line because I tend to sort of lose control of where my lines are going and I really just want them to break each square in half. Just taking your time. So it looks like I have a bunch of triangles now. So we have um, the beginning of what Ensemble is. And this is a great um, looking tangle as it is. I mean, it's kind of cool. You could leave it and be like, that's pretty interesting. But here's the next part of Ensemble. I want you to all just maybe close your eyes for a minute. And I was using an analogy with these girls earlier um, with a Nerf ball, but um, Mazzy suggested a water balloon might be a better suggestion. So I want you all to imagine a water balloon, okay? So we have our water balloon in our head and I want you to open your eyes now and I want you to imagine that your water balloon is just about the size of one of these triangles, but it's round, of course, right? And I want you to imagine you have to stuff your water, little tiny water balloon into that space, okay? So in my brain, okay, I'm imagining that it's going to get stuffed in there, but it's only gonna kind of fit into the parts that are flat, and it's not gonna really fit into those other parts. So basically what I'm doing is I'm tracing along those straight parts, and then I curve, because I can't quite fit into the kerners. And I'm taking my time. You don't want to cheat these shapes. You're just going to look at each triangle and sort of imagine that you're stuffing this water balloon into each space. Taking your time. So you get sort of an interesting shape. But it's important to draw the whole shape. Because sometimes it might look easy to just kind of cut the corners. But I think sometimes it's the effect of drawing over the previous line that you get um, sort of a darker line and it really adds to the, the tangle. This happens to be a favorite tangle of mine as well. I have a lot of favorites, but I love the I do like them all. <laughs> There's some I like that are, well, maybe I just tend to teach the ones I really like because I get excited about them. They're all so awesome. <laughs> this one's fun to shade too. Turning your tile as you go, just making it comfortable. Oh, these are beautiful, you guys. Love these. It's fun to see like how each person has a unique way of drawing the same pattern. And also because we're all working in different strings, our composition is coming out a little bit different. And like I said earlier, I combined two of my sections because I wanted a bigger section. And that's what's so great about these strings is you can kind of see how that original string line, once we get our shading in, and um, that's just gonna disappear. So 
Don't worry about that. Oh, this is pretty fun. Oh, I got one more here. All right, so it looks like we're all done with our Enzeppel, and I'm gonna wait to show you the girls' Enzeppels till after we um, finish this next tangle because they actually just can't stop drawing right now, so that's fine. I am going to um, start the next tangle, and this next tangle is called Printomp. It's um, it's all about spirals, and we use it quite often because it it fits um, into compositions quite well, and it um, adds a nice contrast to um, these two tangles that have a lot of open space. So Printomp is all about spirals and I'm gonna start in this section right here and I'm just gonna start in the center and slowly work my way out, creating a spiral, something like that. And I'm going to continue drawing spirals and I'm gonna smoosh them up once against an, each other. And the girls here, we um, we decided they're all gonna do variations of print tops. So when you see um, what they've done, you'll see that this tangle can be done in so many different ways. And Zen Tangle is all about repetition and learning the same tangles, but putting a little bit of a, a twist on them. And I love how this adds sort of a texture Nice, turn your tile as you work. And so you have these kind of lines that are a little bit closer together next to the poke root and the inzeppel. And I like to begin in the center of my spiral because then you can decide how big you want it to be. If you started on the outside, you're kind of locked in from the beginning. But when you start in the center, you can kind of go around and around. Make it as big as you want. Yeah, you could just keep going, right? And you could also just fit them into little spots. You don't have to stay in that one section. So I sometimes like to... Yeah, mine is kind of taking over my poke root. You're right, exactly. Combining them with your other tangles. Yeah, and I'm overlapping so much is fun too. Right? Once you sort of learn how to allow your tangles to fall behind one another, you get some pretty cool layering. So your uh, drawing goes from being sort of this one dimension to really having a lot of depth, which is kind of, kind of cool that you can do that just with with patterns. I like these patterns because they have like a story to them. And like some of them, they kind of act like characters. <laughs> I like that mask. So let's see here. I've filled in this whole section with Printomp. I'm just trying to decide if I want to... Yeah, I think I am. What about this? So what if you just started to do a little bit of a pattern, like almost as if it fell behind? So I'm just going to play around with adding some spirals here to the other side. And I don't know what's going on with your tile, but you may have seen an opportunity where you can Add some in I've different been places. Making my spirals go in like different directions. Oh, like so going to the right and then. Yeah. All right, so I kind of like how these maybe add just. I think I'm just gonna go to about there. All right, how are you guys doing with your print on? Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Oh my goodness, they're all so different. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. All right, so perhaps you're still filling in a little bit of print top on your tile. The girls are just wrapping up theirs on their tiles, and I am gonna get ready to add one more ink, uh, one more tangle to my tile. All right, it looks like we're ready for one more tangle, and the girls and I have agreed um, to take out an old favorite, um, and I think this will add a nice contrast to contrast to our tiles. So we're gonna show you guys a tangle called Knight's Bridge, and Knight's Bridge is is basically a checkerboard. And me, I'm working in my black and white on white tile here, so I'm gonna have a very basic black and white checkerboard. But the girls have decided to work with their colored pens, and so they might draw their grid out, which I'll show you in a second here, um, with one color, but then color in their um, 
their spaces with a different color, which I think would be really cool. But either way, I think yours is gonna be amazing. And this is what we're gonna do for um, Knightsbridge. I'm gonna draw a, a grid here, and I'm not gonna do it, I'm gonna use this section right here, but I'm gonna do mine a little bit on an angle because I like it might be a little more interesting. So again, I'm going to draw some lines going in one direction. And I don't wanna make them too tiny because that would be a lot of little squares to color in. So, and they don't have to be perfect. They're going in one direction, basically. Then I'm gonna turn my tile this way to draw them going in another direction. I kinda of want them evenly spaced, but they don't have to be perfect. This line would have gone all the way through to here, I think, so. And then maybe I can fit one more right here. I'm gonna pretend maybe that's right there, I think. All right, so I have my grid here. And the first thing I wanna do is just pick one square. Like, don't worry about the rest, just pick one square and we're gonna ink it in. I'm gonna color that square in, okay? Just worry about that one square and we're gonna color it in. And just take your time inking in that one space And you might have a technique you like to color in. You might like every single white space to go away. Or maybe you kind of like the texture of the, the scribbles and the little lines that get left behind. And either way is fine. So I have one square filled in. Now, if I colored in this way and this way and that way, then I'd just have a bunch of, you know, black space. So really want to think about trying to color in every other space. And so the way I do this in my brain is I look for where the corners kiss, okay? So I'm looking for this square right here and I go right to the corner and that's when I color in the next one. So now all I have to worry about is this one square because it's sort of those corners are attached. I'm going to color in this one. Whenever I'm working on this pattern, I always pause in between steps to really make sure I know where the next step is. So. All right, so now I have two squares colored in. And again, the way I like to figure out which square I'm gonna, as I find one that's all colored in and I look for this corner, and then I'd be like, oh, well, this one is a corner and it's not matched up yet, so I'm gonna color in this corner first. But you might find a different trick for doing Knightsbridge, trying to figure out a way to color in every other square. And you know what's cool about Centangle? If you end up coloring in one that's not every other, you can still have a beautiful pattern. It doesn't have to be exact. And I think that's what's um, great when you finally realize that it's okay if there's something a little bit different about each pattern, if it wasn't exactly how you thought it was gonna come out. It's okay. I kind of like, like I made a mistake in coloring them in so I like connected them to make it look yeah. cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you just go with it. This is such a simple pattern, but it's actually kind of hard. Yeah, it's complicated. You have to really focus, but it looks beautiful no matter what. We've um, done this pattern so many times and sometimes I color in two next to each other and then I just keep going and in the end, it actually just looks like it's part of your design. And sometimes when you're drawing these patterns, you get an idea or you get inspired to go in another direction. And I always say, go for it. So just take your time. I like to sort of get lost in these opportunities to just color in and take your time. Watch your pen go back and forth. Everybody goes at a different pace you know, what's great about working with a video is you can just pause it until you're done or go back and watch it again. Maybe you do it a different way. I think my design would look really cool on a shoe. You think so? <laughs> That's actually a really fun idea. It's like, if you think about it, this is how a lot of designs start out with somebody just working through some basic patterns and then it's like where where could you take it next right 
possibilities are endless. I mean, you just get a white pair of shoes and paint on them. That's right. <laughs> All right, so good call on the Knights Bridge. I don't know whose idea that was, but I, I actually think that was really good because it added like a ton of um, contrast to it, and I love that. So I'm working on this white tile here, and I'm really excited to add some shading. Um, I think that Alex is going to add some shading to her tile, but it looks like the other girls who are working with a lot of color, they're just going to continue playing with um, the gel pens. So there's a lot of options here. You're welcome to sort of watch how we're going to add the graphite and then maybe decide if it works on your tile or not okay so I'm gonna first add just a little bit of graphite around um, and I'm also gonna use my tortillon in a minute here um, I'm gonna start with the poke root and when I'm adding shading to my poke root I sometimes just look at one that's overlapping another poke root and I add a little bit of graphite I'm gonna show you guys um, the whole step here and then I sort of buff it out just a tiny bit um, to add see how that adds like a nice little shadow and then I'm gonna go around to all of them and I sort of like to go back and forth and sort of buff them out as I go along but you might like to do it a different way there's no wrong or right way to do that in fact when you're shading with Zentangle, there's not a wrong or right way to um, shade in general. You might pick a whole other way. I'm going to actually also add some shading. See where it goes over the print top? I'm going to add like a little bit of graphite under here. So it looks like it's kind of going over it, which is kind of fun. And that'll go all the way around. All right, so I have all my shading on my poke root done here, and now I'm going to add um, shade. I'm going to kind of skip over the print top. I'm going to do um, my Inzeppel here. This is my favorite tangle, the shade. And um, if you have it nice and big like this, you can kind of do the same thing as me. Um, or you might like it unshaded. That's fine, too. So what I love to do on my Inzeppel is I just very carefully, I take a little bit of graphite, and I just put it all around the edges of this one kind of like shape we have here. And then I just gently sort of buff it out. And then you want to leave that center to look unshaded. Look how magical that looks. So look at the difference to all of those. So I'm going to go ahead and, and do that same thing to all of these in sepals. It takes a little while, but it's so worth it because you get a really cool effect. So just take your time. Again, it's a little bit of graphite around the edges and then just gently, and maybe in like little circles, but see how I'm not even touching the middle because that's where you get your highlight. You get a cool highlight in the middle. All right, so I have all my shading done on my end zeppel, and honestly, I just love the way that that tangle comes alive after you shade it. So that's one that I always love to shade, but it has a totally different look with the gel pen, so I can see how you might have left it. So with my print top, I'm kind of just going to, I like how this is a little bit darker here, so I think I'm going to add some dark shading on the other side. But shading is optional. The thing I always like encourage folks when they're adding graphite is to you don't want to color it all in. You want to leave some left unshaded and that gives you sort of that highlight. So I'm just adding a little bit of graphite here and there to create some contrast. So you can see how I added graphite here and this part is left unshaded and that kind of adds some nice contrast. And I'm looking at my Knightsbridge and Knightsbridge looks really neat all by itself, but I'm just going to do one little kind of cool shading technique here where I'm just going to add a shadow underneath some of this print top on the Knights Bridge. But I think the rest of the Knights Bridge I'm going to leave just as is. But your tile is different than mine and you may see different opportunities and um, the girls here they have done their tiles much different than mine and that's that's kind of what's so great about all of this is you can make it your own. 
explore different techniques and you may even go back and do this whole video all over again um, now that you've watched it once and your ideas are kind of churning in your brain and you have a little bit of familiar thoughts with some of these tangles. All right. Oh, what fun is that? So I have all of my, uh, my ink down. I've sort of gone back in, added my shading and I'm, I'm really happy with how my tile looks and I'm going to add, um, my almost last step here, and that's um, adding my my chop or my initials to my tile. If you girls want to go ahead and add your chops to your tiles once you get to a place where you're feeling good about it. And I'm just going to add mine right here in the corner. And you might have a special way you like to write your, your name or your initials. And now that we have that done, I'm going to share with you these absolutely fabulous tiles from my apprentices here. And so we have Gwen and Indy. So we'll do these in the, because we don't have that much room here. So we have Gwen and Indy's tiles here, which are just so much fun. You guys did a great job. It's, oh, look at these overlapping print tops and, oh, you put your chop right in the middle. I love that. These are beautiful. A little bit of a highlight on top of the poke root going around the edges with the lines. Super fabulous. These are beautiful girls. We have Alex and Mazzy here. Totally different approaches. Um, so great. Love the colors here. These are so awesome. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. Um, this is um, another approach to print top we were talking about. See how she did it with the ovals really close together. We were we were just saying how they reminded us of paper clips. And Mazzy did her print hump with these lines that went through and they almost look like little snails crawling across. So same tangle, but totally different approach. So we have all these different really fun tiles here. I just want to take a moment to thank all of you for joining me. It's been super fun. <laughs> and um, I hope you all have something pretty awesome in front of you as well. So thanks again. We'll see you soon. Take Bye. care.